You're listening to Deliberate Living, a podcast that inspires, empowers, and encourages listeners to live life more authentically. My name is Holly Priestley, and I'm a full-time nomad and creator who has been living in my 1997 Ford van since January 1st of 2019. I travel the United States with my dog, learning how to live with more authenticity. I explore different ways people choose to ditch the prescribed life we've all been sold and live on their terms, finding freedom and happiness however they choose. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Deliberate Living Podcast. I am your host, Holly Priestley, and this week's guest is Ange. She is traveling the American country with the cutest, tiniest little RV you've ever seen, along with two of the cutest, fluffiest little bunnies you've ever seen. We don't see a lot of road people with bunnies, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and I was lucky enough to actually meet Ange and her her kiddos, her fluffy kiddos, um, just the other week. And I'm really excited to have her on the show because I think that her story is interesting, inspiring, different. Um, and I love the way that she's making this work. So hello, Ange. Hi. <laughs> Can you give the audience a little bit of like your backstory for the people who haven't been following you on Instagram for the last year and who maybe haven't met you in person yet and don't know about your story? <laughs> yeah, so I, I travel <laughs> I travel in my 1986 Toyota Dolphin, but it was modified to be smaller. So like the bathroom was taken off, so like the back four feet were taken off and all the RV components. So when I got it, it was just like a table and a pillow couch and a bed. And I put in like a kitchen sink and like solar and all that so it could be a little bit more livable um like added a fridge did some more upgrades after having been on the road for like six months and yeah then I also got my bunnies after six months as well and added them into the equation which was a big adjustment (laughs) but um totally worth it and makes traveling much better yeah I love how quirky your vehicle is because it is like is that a dolphin? Is that not a dolphin? Like it looks like a dolphin, but it's like really small and it's super strange, but it's so cute. I just think it's so cute. Do you think that uh, your background in architecture gave you kind of a a leg up in terms of like looking at the space creatively and being able to make it into a space that you could live in, even though it was different, like shorter, smaller, but still functional, but a little strange. Do you think that your background had anything to do with that or were you just like, I'm gonna make it work regardless? Um, Yeah, I mean, it helped just because I was able to visualize what I wanted pretty quickly. Like I knew like um, for the kitchen counter, I had like a set overhang so I can sit cross-legged under it perfectly and like the height is right to like the bench seat and everything. So like all of that was a bit intuitive. Um, But yeah, I could definitely make anything work. Like if you're committed to just like living on the road, then you're gonna do it regardless. So (laughs) yeah, a little bit of both. I think that's really cool. When you saw, did you test drive a lot of other vans or uh, rigs before you got Big Blue or were you just saw that one and you're like, oh, this is it. This is the one for me. I'm done looking. No, I didn't. (laughs) I didn't drive anything else. I messaged a few people that had like cargo vans. Um, Like I was in New York at the time in New York City. So I was looking at like Queens, Jersey, Pennsylvania. And the people that I messaged, I was like, hey, do you have any rust? And like, what's the history of like any accidents or anything? Like just like really basic stuff. And they all responded like, yeah, there's rust. And like, yeah, that's been in an accident or something. Yeah. So I was like, all right, there could be like, I don't know, like frame damage or something. I just didn't want to deal with that. Um, so I started looking at like a little bit outside of my price range, like on the higher end of what I wanted to pay for and started looking at RVs instead of just vans. Like I typed in the RV in like Craigslist. Just because I was thinking maybe someone had like partially renovated a van and they would like, I don't know, just have some stuff in there already that I could just move around. And then that's when Blue popped up. <laughs> so, I only drove her. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to take the plunge into road life from what you were doing previously? Um, I had been thinking about it for like two, almost maybe three years beforehand. Um, I think initially it popped up on like Pinterest like those very like backdoor open view sort of images and (laughs) yeah I saw like the very classic like van life pictures probably like like that's a really cool thing but it wasn't like I was really happy living in Brooklyn like I had my apartment and like my professional career job track thing that I was really enjoying but it just seemed like really cool interesting alternative to traveling like plane travel or like backpacking or anything like that because I'd done some trips to Europe where I would just like go with like a small bag and just kind of like 
sand hostels and take a train around. Um, and I was like, oh, you could do that, but have the comforts of home. Like, that's interesting. <laughs> so I guess I thought of it as maybe more of like a part-time possibility. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of a couple of years after that was pretty burnt out at work. Um, I switched to a more corporate job and it was not my vibe. I was not happy. I was doing a lot of work for developers, which just was very unsatisfying. <laughs> and yeah, and like personal life stuff was just altering. Like I got out of a relationship and I was just kind of like rethinking everything. And I'm like, now is a good time to make a big move. And it just kind of, yeah, I just decided to do it. So quit my job and moved everything to my mother's house and did it. <laughs> <laughs> and so now you've been traveling in blue for just over a year, right? Yeah, I bought her January of 2020. And then, um, well, that's like when I saw her, I guess I didn't officially pay for her till like March or something, but um, yeah. And then I left in May because it took like a month and a half to do renovations. Um, there was a lot more work than I realized I needed to do. Like the whole front loft had to be rebuilt because it was just completely saturated in water. <laughs> like the wood would just like crumbled when you touched it. So I had to do that. Um, yeah, I thought I was going to be out of there in like a few weeks and it turned into like a month and a half, but that's fine. I think that's pretty standard for the lifestyle. <laughs> There's always like something you think takes like, yeah, it always takes longer than you think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so when you first moved into blue in May uh, in New York, what were those first few weeks like? I went to my friends in South Dakota first. Um, so I went from New York, I was like in upstate New York, pretty close to the Canadian border where my mom lives, like on, like she's between Vermont and Canada, basically, she's like right there. Uh, so I went from there to South Dakota, went across like, also this was like May prime pandemic, so like leaving New York where everyone's masked and like, you know, it's like pretty locked down, like we were able to leave the house, but it was pretty locked down to like through Ohio where people were kind of like not really wearing masks. Then you get to South Dakota where it's like no one was masked. <laughs> it was very interesting. So I was having some culture shock and also just like, was this a mistake? Am I gonna come back with COVID? Like <laughs> what's, what's gonna happen? Um, but yeah, it was nice just being able to like kind of transition. It took me a week to drive across um, to like transition into finding campsites and how to do that. Um, like I slept at a trailhead, um, I stayed, at a Walmart, maybe a couple of Walmarts in like Illinois or something, rest stops, just like, I tried like everything in that week, just like all the different places. In Wisconsin, I actually couldn't find a camp spot. I went to a couple of like Navy places and they were blocked off. So I ended up paying for a campsite, which is the one and only time I've done that actually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just like didn't know what else to do and I was exhausted and I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> and they had like a lake, it was nice. But um. And then, yeah, I just got to stay at my friends for, I stayed there for a few weeks, actually. So I was just parked on their property and yeah, it was like a nice easing in. I didn't like take off and never come back. Like I left and went back a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably a really good way to do it. And like, just to get your bearings and get your sense of space and self and um, comfortability and understanding. And then you know, maybe like bring your pets in or, you know, make it like more of a commitment versus like, I'm going to check this out. Maybe I'm not going to like do, a, I'm not going to like dive in feet first. I'm just going to, I'm just going to test it out and then we'll see how it goes. And if it goes well, we'll figure exactly. out the rest of it. I had no clue how, like I'd never rented a camper van before or anything. My mother was like, why don't you rent a van and like try it and see if you like it. I was like, I'm buying this 1986 vehicle. <laughs> That's just what's going to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah I kind of just dove right into it but I did think of it initially as like a year investment because yeah. my initial thought was to do it for a year and get to like the Pacific Northwest and relocate and just kind of like start life over there that was my thought yeah and then once I started I'd say like six months in I was like okay I definitely want to keep doing this but I don't know for how long and then now after a year it's been like yeah no I'm gonna keep doing this so I don't know how long but <laughs> definitely more than what I initially thought but yeah, I think that that's pretty common. I kind of, I did the same thing when I bought my van. I was thinking like, all right, this will be a good van for a year, you know, and then I'll, I'll either get a new van or I'll do like a full like rebuild, remodel, whatever, because that's what I saw other vanners doing. 
And um, it seemed like that's what you did. And then, you know, that year mark kind of came and went. And now the two year mark has come and gone. And like, I'm still in the same van. I've made like a handful of changes, but I haven't done a full rebuild. And I don't want to. <laughs> but yeah, it's very similar. It's like, I don't, I'll do this as long as it makes sense, as long as I want to. And then as soon as I don't want to, or it doesn't make sense, I won't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're in it, it's kind of hard to do renovations because you're living in it. So like after I did my first like month away and went back to my mom's, I did some more renovations. And then after the six month mark, I was in um, Phoenix and I, that's when I did like my solar, my fridge and like redid like my batteries and like all this stuff and added some other, some more um, cabinetry. And I was parked in um, like this parking lot where I had left blue for the month that I had like flown back for Christmas. So it was just like, the guy was the kindest person. He just let me like chill there for like a few extra weeks. And I just like did a bunch of installing in his <laughs> lot, <laughs> which was great. But yeah, if you're just on the road, like parked in a Home Depot parking lot or something, it's really difficult to do anything really nice. Like I've thrown together some cabinets and they look like crap and I hate them still. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like not really an option unless you want to like move your entire house out and then like do it well when you're not yeah. living in it. Otherwise, you're just like, I need to have this done by dinner so I can cook on the counter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's super similar. Like if you have to take your your van, your rig, your dolphin to the mechanic, it's not just taking your car to the mechanic. It's taking your whole friggin house to the mechanic. And so you want them to be done with it by the end of the day so that you have a place to sleep. It'd be yeah. really nice if they could get done with it, you know, so that you could like have a place to cook and eat and work and all of that. And, you know, especially if you have pets, like being out of your house is a huge like upset. And so, yeah, building anything, yeah. new, changing anything at all can be like not worth it. <laughs> so you just, yeah, you're going to lose so much money trying to like figure something out, like stay in an Airbnb or something. Yeah, it will be just, yeah. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I understand why you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> also, like my house is fine. If it wasn't fine, I would have changed it. But right. it's fine. And yeah. And the things that I would change aren't a big enough deal yet for me to want to like post up somewhere, move everything out, tear it apart, put it back. To, like that's just that's months. That's months of work and I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, you've mentioned your mom a few times and like going to visit her and leaving some stuff at her house. Um, how did your family and friends and like that whole side of your life feel about you moving into a vehicle and like leaving? Were they always supportive or were they kind of like, oh, okay, that's weird? <laughs> um, thankfully, my mom's pretty understanding. Like she's done some really weird stuff in her life as well, like very alternative um, in her 20s, especially. So she like gets it. Um, not to the point where like she thought it was going to be something I continued doing I think she understood the like year like see the country that's cool <laughs> but now I think she's kind of like it's a nice trip you're on I'm like this is my life mother but okay <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah like she's supportive <laughs> that trip thing is is real like oh what what a nice trip you're having like I this is life now <laughs> <laughs> this is just my life but thanks <laughs> yeah yeah um and my friends like uh yeah, I mean, the majority of my friends are in New York City uh, doing exactly what I was doing, you know, like living in an apartment, working in an in a office. And I have two friends that think van life is cool and want it part time in their future, which is uh, exciting because one of them's in France. So I'm like, I could like fly there and take it when you don't want it. <laughs> and you can live in mine when you want to come here. But I'm really hoping she does it <laughs> But uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, but other than that like they're all like this is really cool and I think I've they understand me enough to know that it's like something alternative that I would do <laughs> but I, I don't I don't think they'd like sign up and do it themselves or like I don't know my best friend doesn't even camp like she hates the outside <laughs> like if there's like a bug like she freaks out so. <laughs> I've been like fly out and meet me and she's like how about when you're in the city and we can do something yeah. And you're like, I don't want to take my rig into the city, but thanks. <laughs> it sucks, but okay. I'll try and meet you in LA. Like, yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, so there's varying degrees of understanding, but no one was like surprised. No one was like, oh, that's not something you would do. They were all like, Yeah, okay, this makes sense. You're gonna go live in a vehicle when you didn't drive and never owned a car before. Yeah, okay, you would do that. 
<laughs> that's good. I think that's that's helpful to have friends and family who are like, we don't get it, but we support you. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, obviously you said that after six months, you knew you were going to be doing it longer. And after a year, now you know you're definitely going to be doing it longer. What do you think are some of the biggest like pros and cons for you um, to this lifestyle that keep you drawn to it? But also cons, we have to be realistic. Like it's a hassle. It's a very complicated lifestyle. <laughs> so for you and your lifestyle, what are the biggest pros and cons? I think the biggest pro is being able to travel slowly through places that I never really thought I would see or never really even thought of before, honestly, like driving through small towns because I try to stay off interstates. Um, so I'm often just like kind of on random small roads that go through every single town. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's really interesting to see a lot of America that way. I only traveled to big cities before, like flying just to like check them out. So and also like getting to national parks is really difficult if you don't have a vehicle because they tend to be really far from places and what you give yourself maybe like a week to try to see a few things you're just running around so yeah it's really the only way to see the country and that's been really special and really interesting um and also the amount of time you have alone is something i think anyone else gets unless you live on like a homestead maybe and like you just set up your life in that way i had never spent this much time on my own in and my entire life <laughs> like because you were like from family to roommates to like partners or whatever like even if I lived alone um which I did for like a couple of years I still was like out a lot seeing people because I felt so alone at home so it was like nice to have that but I still was very social um maybe more so than before I think um so yeah that's been a big adjustment positive and negative lots yeah. of growth but also lots of like am I going crazy? Do I need to go to town and try and talk to a human? <laughs> <laughs> but then you go to town and you try to talk to a human and you're like, okay, A, I forgot how to do this. And B, there's a reason I don't. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, the first time I like met up with a group, I went to Schooly Palooza. Oh, um, goodness gracious. Just to like meet. I didn't go like when it was prime happening. I went to see like a couple of friends, like internet friends that I hadn't met yet. And so I literally like, parked away from everyone and only saw them. And that was really cool. I really enjoyed it. But it was the first time being around humans and I was like, uh, how do I talk? <laughs> it's been I like eight months. Can, I think most people can relate to that right now coming off of a pandemic and stuff and yeah, sort of maybe going back into a pandemic. We'll see. But yeah, I think a lot of us have kind of had to get comfortable being alone and uh, have to relearn how to be a human being around other human beings. Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit of starting van life on the East Coast and just not really having community. So I didn't have that to do when I first started. And also, yeah, pandemic. <laughs> not, not being able to see people, <laughs> which yeah. is like an odd thing. Like not being able to see friends for so long has been really strange. And like early pandemic, everyone was kind of doing Zoom calls and like catching up and stuff. And now we've all fallen into normal life. And now it's like, it's been interesting seeing how like friendships kind of evolve into. Yeah that and then just being away for so long and having very different interests and like life happening now so yeah, yeah. It's been different. absolutely friendships definitely change I mean they're going to change all throughout our lives especially our adult lives as you know different people take jobs in different parts of the country or like get married and have babies and then their lives are so different from those of us who are not getting married and having babies and yeah, it's yeah. just, it's interesting. And then you throw in like another lifestyle change, like moving into a vehicle and like being gone um, and then being gone and in like an alternative kind of way, like some people adapt really well to it. I've had friends come, you know, meet me on the road and, and trip with me for a little while. And then I've had some people who it's like, oh, let me know when you're back. I'm not coming to meet you. You have to come to me. And I just don't see them. <laughs> but like, it's yeah, exactly. like two and um yeah it's it's interesting how it just kind of adds a little a little spice to that mixture yeah but at the same time it's been really nice meeting people that do this lifestyle because I feel like well first of all like Instagram is a great way to communicate with humans that you maybe would never have met otherwise right because yeah. you just like drive past each other maybe but um no it's just been interesting meeting other people that do the same sort of lifestyle because it's much easier to just like kind of pick up at like these things are our like 
our norm, like living in a vehicle, having to find somewhere to sleep and get water and do all these things. Like that's all normal now for us. So then yeah. like, yeah, you just have like this immediate basis of friendship kind of that you can build on. And that's really interesting versus yeah. like living in a city and like having like an apartment and like a normal job. I feel like that's not something you take as like a normal status quo, like baseline. Now we can be friends because we do these things that are so normal. It's like, I don't know. There's something about like road life that just like bonds people together a lot more. Yeah. Maybe because it is a bit more challenging. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I mean, you have similar interests obviously, and the lifestyle is so unique and you have a lot of unique needs. And when you do camp with people, I mean, you, there's no way not to like get intimate right away, right? Like, because you have to figure out like all of your life is happening in whatever bubble you're in. And if somebody is camped right next to you, like they know when you're awake, they know when you're going to go pee, they know when you're eating. Like, it's just, it's easy to kind of get into that, like an under, like a deeper level of like understanding and intimacy than you get in like a sticks and bricks house, which has a lot of pros and and then some some detriments as well <laughs> but um yeah. I do think that's like a really unique aspect of the lifestyle but yeah yeah there's definitely a yeah a new level of intimacy yeah that just kind of like comes with that that's unique too because also it's like if you have an apartment or like even roommates like your boundaries are pretty defined or you're out at work often your life is not really as concentrated as it is in a vehicle. So. Right. Yeah, completely agree. Totally agree with that. Um, how do you sustain your lifestyle, like financially? How are you affording this? What does it cost you to live in your vehicle? Um, anything you want to share about that? That's one of the biggest questions I always get. And I'm sure you do too about, wait, how do you afford this? <laughs> yeah, it was something I didn't really... I mean, I, I watched a lot of videos on how other people do it and everyone's like, oh yeah, I'm like a digital nomad or whatever. I was like, okay, well, I'm not sure how this is going to work for me because I've only ever worked in an office and like being a, like a digital nomad architect didn't really seem like something viable. So I didn't really consider it for the first year. I just had enough savings to cover my life for the year. I plan to just take a break basically. Um, I had a couple of side projects that I've been doing for like friends and family that helped a little but I did just like burn my savings that first year <laughs> and I would not suggest it <laughs> but that's just what I decided to do just to like get out the door and like I figured I'd figure it out as I went and yeah yeah so come January I started working part-time for like an old contractor friend of mine which is like a stable paycheck that like helps out a little bit um, it's like part-time, very minimal work. <laughs> um, probably not even part-time. It's part-time is like a certain number of hours. So it's less than that. But, <laughs> um, and just like a few like extra um, renovation projects that I've gotten here and there that helped. But it's a constant like trying to figure it out. I'm still not really sure what I'm going to do in the long term. Mm -hmm. um, because of the pandemic, a lot of people were like cool with it. it's like, oh, you're not even here. That's fine. You don't need to see it. Like, <laughs> right. you can't come anyway, normally, <laughs> even if you were in New York. Um, but now like, we'll see how that adjusts. But then again, yeah. it could be adjusting back. So who knows? Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I have some like, idealistic goals, I'd say that I've had since like college even. Um, as to what type of work I want to do and where and how, but I don't know. I have no idea. I don't have answers. <laughs> my my way of doing it worked for me, but it's like when people ask me, and I'm like, I don't take me as like a reference because I'm right. a very odd situation. I feel, but I mean, I think that's but, um, a perfectly common answer, and I think that it's. Um, I think that's how a lot of people do it. You know, people ask me like how I afford it and how I make money. And I'm like, well, I do kind of a lot of different things. And like, if you ask me again in six months, my answer is going to change, but that's how you do it. You just figure yeah. it out. And that's, that's like kind of the epitome yeah. of the whole lifestyle. Where are you going to camp? I don't know. You figure it out. Where are you going to take a shit? I don't know. You figure it out. Where are you going to shower? I don't know. You figure it out. How are you going to pay for it? I don't know. You figure it out. And there's so many different yeah. ways to do it. You know, you can get seasonal work. You can be a digital nomad. You can sell pictures of your feet online I don't know like there's so many things <laughs> whatever works for you yeah whatever works for you. <laughs> but also I mean like I yeah like when people are curious about that like from my past life like they my first thing is like 
oh, it's so much cheaper to live like this. Like I've lowered my yes. monthly expenses and like everything so much that like if I were to tell you how much I made, it would be ridiculous to you because you live in an apartment and have like a mortgage or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, like it works for me because I barely need anything, right? So, so yeah, so it's kind of hard to say because some people will spend like $50,000 on their van build and then need to work 40 hours a week to pay for like campsites for hookups maybe or just like I don't know they like to shop or something I don't know so like their expenses are going to be so incredibly different than mine because I like I avoid towns because I want to spend money in towns but I don't like to so like I'm just saying I'd rather just like yeah I'd rather just go on a hike and not be like given the temptation like yeah so do you have any idea what your future looks like where you want to go um and any future plans at all for you and blue and the buns um so the bunnies have always been like a big consideration so i wasn't sure how they would adjust to the lifestyle and they've been doing amazingly i would say they don't love driving but like neither do i (laughs) so i try to like not drive very much or very far um and also just like financially as well it's nice to not have to like trek it anywhere yeah Uh, and repairs also recently <laughs> um, have made me kind of rethink what I'm doing and for how long in blue anyway. So I feel like I know I want to continue living in this way for a few more years. Um, I have like a three to five year like cycle that I live in <laughs> after three years of like one sort of thing. If it's like the same job, the same apartment, whatever it is, I tend to kind of like get a little antsy and want something different. Um, So I'm feeling after the three year mark in blue, I'll probably want something different. So I don't know if that is just going to be like a completely different rig or land because I'm leaning towards wanting that in the future. And I could see that in like five years, maybe something more stable, but I don't know, maybe a new rig would come sooner Um, just because it's difficult to keep dumping money into an older vehicle that isn't like keeping up with what I want. Like if I want to go up to like Canada and like down to Mexico and she's like not keeping up with me, that's not, I don't know. That's not great. So I'm starting to wonder if her retirement is going to come sooner than I thought (laughs) and what that will look like. I have no idea, but um, yeah, something with maybe higher clearance and more capabilities, (laughs) less um, higher gas mileage. (laughs) Yeah would be great um yeah which would be like more of like an initial investment into something newer and like more capable but would in the long run be way better <laughs> so yeah I'm thinking about that in the next couple of years um and then also like yeah I would like to live in land live in land have some <laughs> land and uh to live on even if it's just like part-time um because I really want to build something for myself which is I've never built anything other than like furniture and blue, like just read some of the exterior and like her interior, like in terms of like hands-on actually building stuff. So I would like to have some more building construction skills that I could use towards my future something. Cabin in the woods. (laughs) (laughs) So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. So I would like to do more hands-on work, I think, which would be potentially also my financial thing which like I can maybe like work for someone that does build homes so I've been thinking about that but that requires me to be in one place for a little while so which could work for blue because blue likes to move slow so yeah we'll see it sounds like you have some really exciting plans and then also just like an understanding of things might change and if I want to do x then I might have to do y and it's kind of like we just said like figure it out <laughs> yeah it is true because things evolve really quickly on the road so something that could be like a really minor issue in normal life uh could be a very like immediate major issue in van life <laughs> like you can't move your house you can't get out of the campsite that you need to leave soon or anything so um i forget what my point of that was <laughs> i was saying that but i don't remember what the point was <laughs> Uh, that you have to that things evolve really quickly and van time is so different than sticks and bricks time it's so different yeah but yeah things do change a lot 
And so I'm open to changing and that not being my plan or that being my plan sooner, like in six months. But yeah, I feel like the, the rest of the summer is pretty set. Like, I feel like I have plans and know what I'm doing. And yeah, who knows? Things could be totally different by like next January. I have no clue. Yeah, I mean, like, and that's exciting. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if I didn't live this way, I think like it would be very obvious what the next step is, you know, like you just work more and get a nicer house. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> um, which is, I guess, kind of what I'm saying. Like, yeah, nice I mean, you have your little, money. you have your little starter home now, and you know, whatever yeah. comes down the the line will be your next home. <laughs> exactly. Whether it's yeah. on wheels or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of similar. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who is maybe considering making the leap into road life, but has always lived and is surrounded by people who live that more traditional life? You know, apartment regular job that sort of thing um who might be like a little bit nervous like like the you of two years ago you know what kind of advice would you give to her um it's gonna be really scary (laughs) 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 it's just gonna be there's Um, nothing you can do do. it's gonna feel like really scary (laughs) um i would say just make sure Maybe don't get an old vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Something like, more just dive and like yeah. But if you don't like it, like you can just go back. Yeah. You know, like that was something like I didn't commit a huge amount of money initially where I was like stuck in almost a mortgage with my vehicle or something like that. So I just kind of I had like a small amount of money that I was willing to spend. And then I knew I could take a little bit more and make it better to live in more comfortably. And that was really beneficial because it wasn't like I was completely broke on like just starting the lifestyle. Right. You I guess that would be kind of advice. Yeah. Yeah. So it was always going to be there like part time if it wasn't something that like I really loved even, you know, I could just like park blew out my mom's and like move back to New York if I needed to like the city. So yeah, like you, it's not like a, like a life changing, like, you can never go back to your old life or you can't change your mind about it. Like it's okay to change your mind about it and not love it because it's hard and you're not going to love it all the time. (laughs) But um, glamorous as it looks, it's not as easy as it looks. Like it's definitely a challenge that you give to yourself. (laughs) There was like a great meme the other day that was like so many van lifers that started during COVID and then like nine months later, we're like, no, we're out. This is not what we wanted. And I'm like, that's totally fair. Like, if you did see a lot of national parks and a lot of the country that you never would have otherwise in nine months, and then you just like park it and you go back to normal life, like that's totally fine. You mm-hmm. probably grew a lot and learned a lot and saw a lot in that amount of time. So yeah, you well, have yeah. experiences that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So yeah, that's it. That's great. Yeah. So it's <laughs> totally worth it at whatever amount of time you do it for or wherever you go. Totally worth it. Yeah, completely agree. And where can people come find you online if they want to see your quirky rig and your cute bunnies and all the adventures and mishaps that you might be having? <laughs> equal equal parts these days. Equal parts. It kind of depends on the week, you know. Maybe by the time this comes out, it'll all be smooth sailing. But you know, it's fan life. <laughs> I hope so. I hope I'm rolling into Utah on a wonderful new brake system that works. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, um, on Instagram, I'm adventure underscore big blue, because I live in big blue, because she's big and blue, and um, the bunnies are, like, they have their own Instagram, which I don't really post them a ton on, they're Joey and Ella, if you want to follow them, but also their LinkedIn, like, my bio of my main Instagram. <laughs> I'll link them in the show notes as well. <laughs> if anyone just wants to see bunny content, you know where to go. <laughs> yeah. And you do want to see bunny content you do you just do everyone does yeah I think so (laughs) (laughs) awesome well thank you so much for being here and being a part of the show even though we had some technical difficulties (laughs) sorry you're gonna have to edit for like a week (laughs) that's okay I will do it (laughs) and thank you to everybody who has tuned in to this week's episode or any of the weeks I really appreciate everybody who listens watches reads whatever 
Um, and if you liked this episode, go ahead and like it. If you've made it all the way to the end and you aren't subscribed yet, you should probably go ahead and subscribe because you like what you heard. And if you want to help offset some of the costs that go into producing the show, I have a Venmo and a PayPal linked below. And if you want some like backstage access behind the scenes and maybe even to get a little snail mail in your mailbox for me go to my patreon which is also linked below and uh, until then i hope you guys all have an excellent week and you tune in next week for another excellent episode bye hi we've reached the end of this episode of deliberate living you can find the show notes and everything we referenced over on my website at www.hollycpriestley.com And be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube where I also publish weekly blogs and other informative videos. You can come join my Patreon community and get behind the scenes and bonus content as well as postcards, stickers, and whatever else I choose to create. I'll see you next week on Deliberate Living and until next time, keep your life on the D.